information in American Sign Language. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, have created new videos in American Sign Language to help you keep up with the latest COVID-19 news and guidance. Learn how to protect yourself and the people you care about from COVID-19. Hello everyone. How are you? I'm Sign One News anchor Jadeep Gore. Here's a quick look at the top trending stories making headlines today. If you post an interesting comment about this update, we may add it at the bottom of the screen. Brian Koberger, the suspect in the fatal shooting of four University of Idaho students last year, has now been officially indicted by a grand jury on murder and burglary charges. So what does that mean? It means a preliminary hearing was canceled and he appeared in court again earlier than expected. He now faces a five count grand jury indictment, four counts of murder and one count of burglary. Kohlberger still is being held without bail. If he is convicted, he could face the death penalty. There is a gruesome story out of New York. Two boys reported missing last week were found dead in two separate Manhattan rivers. Eleven-year-old Alpha Barry and 13-year-old Garrett Warren were last seen together in Harlem on May 12th or 13th. Their bodies were found miles apart from one another. The medical examiner determined Garrett died of accidental drowning. Barry's cause of death is still under review. Authorities say it's believed the boys were friends. And according to law enforcement, another teen boy said the boys were playing at the water's edge when one boy may have shoved the other and both ended up falling in. On Thursday, Garrett's body was recovered not far away in the Harlem River. On Saturday, Alpha's body was found in the Hudson River. The NAACP is urging people of color not to travel to Florida. The organization issued a formal travel advisory this past weekend. The statement said, in part, under the leadership of Governor DeSantis, the state of Florida has become hostile to black Americans and in direct conflict with the democratic ideals that our nation was founded upon. The group says the travel advisory is in direct response to DeSantis's administration's aggressive attempts to erase black history and to restrict diversity, equity, and inclusion programs in Florida schools. The NAACP's action comes a day after another civil rights group, the League of United Latin American Citizens, issued a similar travel ban.
A judge in Mississippi denied a transgender girl from attending her high school graduation on Saturday night because she wanted to dress as a girl. The teen, who goes by the initials LB, and her mother spoke out, saying they were disappointed by the judge's ruling and thought they had an understanding she could attend the ceremony. Because the student identifies as female, they thought they were following the girl's dress code. The American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, went to federal court to try to allow the student to attend. The student has been openly transgender since she began attending Harrison Central High School. However, the school district says it relies on birth certificates to record whether students are male or female. President Joe Biden returned to the White House late Sunday night after cutting short his trip to the G7 summit in Japan. He returned for an urgent meeting today, Monday. He met with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy today for another discussion about the debt limit. The potential debt default date is less than two weeks away, and concerns about the possible consequences are growing. Time is running out for Biden and McCarthy. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the U.S. could go broke as soon as June 1st. Some analysts say a default would likely cause a recession, a jump in unemployment, place federal and military salaries in jeopardy, and cause a stoppage of Social Security benefits. A former NASA astronaut and three private citizens blasted off from Florida in a SpaceX rocket on Sunday. They are now docked with the International Space Station. The Houston-based company Axiom put the mission together. It is the second all-private mission to the space station. And this mission will make history, too. Stem cell researcher Rayana Barnawi will become the first woman from Saudi Arabia to travel to space. The three paying citizens will work alongside the crew members on the space station for a week. They will carry out nearly two dozen experiments and science projects, including work on stem cells and other biomedical research. Now let's take a look at a couple of comments from Sign One News viewers. Last week, a new poll revealed that many Americans say access to guns is the number one threat to public health. According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been more than 200 mass shootings in the U.S. so far this year. At Cherokee Native 8354 posted, the law needs to change. To get a gun license, 
there should be a five-year waiting period to investigate a person's history and mental health. Sadly, the gun violence will not stop. Police are using tasers less and guns more. At Monique West, 5451 commented on the story of authorities deciding not to press charges against a Walgreens security guard who shot and killed a suspected shoplifter. She posted, interesting how that cop didn't fear for his life. Makes you wonder what cops who say that have a real fear of, huh? Thank you for sharing your comments. Sign One News will be broadcasting updates Monday through Friday. A big thank you to our Sign One News app supporters. You help make this broadcast happen. You can download the Sign One News app by heading to the App Store or Google Play Store on your smartphone. And you can also watch on Apple TV, Amazon, and Roku.